to pray. We're going to pray for just five minutes. And um, always, Scripture says, enter into his gates with what? With thanksgiving and into his court with praise. I just want you to open your mouth and say, Father, thank you for my life today. Open your mouth and say, Father, thank you for my life today. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your goodness over me. This is a new day, Lord. I am grateful. I am grateful for that which you are doing, for that which you have done. I am grateful for bringing me to this day. I am grateful for helping me to see this day. I am grateful for your love over me, over my family. Open your mouth and give God thanks as we thank God for his goodness in our lives, for another opportunity to see this day. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. Lord, we acknowledge you as you are the one that has kept us. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want us to say, Father, thank you for young and godly. Thank you for what you are going to do today. Thank you for how you are going to change my life. Open your mouth and give God thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this platform, for young and godly generation. Thank you for that which you are set to do today. Thank you for how you have planned to change my life today. Thank you for the things you are going to do. Thank you how you're going to shift me to become a better person. Thank you for how you're going to move me to become even greater in your kingdom. Lord, accept our thanks. Thank you, Father, for that which you are going to do. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We say thank you. We bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You will say, Father, open my understanding. Everything that we will talk about today, I want to know it. I want to understand it. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, give me understanding. Give me understanding. Everything they will, we will talk about today, everything you will talk about today, I want to know it. I want to understand it. I want to be able to apply it. I want to be able to live it in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, Father, give me understanding. Speak to me today. Give me understanding. As your word comes forth, Lord, let there be light. Let there be understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your grace over our lives, for our families, for every child, adult, woman, man. Father, we thank you for the ability to be here this morning. Oh, Lord, we are grateful. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, we cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. We cover this platform with the blood of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, Holy Spirit, we take we, you take preeminence in the name of Jesus. All we shall do today that you teach us yourself, the words that we shall hear, the words of spirit, that we shall understand them in the name of Jesus. And it will transform our lives, O oh God. And that is that as we go in, Lord, you in, we bring more people to join in the name of Jesus and your name be glorified. Father, we say thank you. We ask that you take all the glory in the name of Jesus. We ask that your name be glorified above all else in the name of Jesus. And in our lives going forward, in our lives going forward, Christ, Jesus Christ, takes preeminence in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Okay, I just want us to get in the atmosphere of worship. You alone deserve my honor. You alone deserve my praise. You alone deserve my honor. My honor. So we lift you. You alone. You alone deserve my own. So we leave you. You alone deserve my own. So we leave you. 
Everyone to sing you for lying down. You alone deserve my worship, and you alone deserve my praise. You alone deserve the honor, so we lift you high. Yahweh, we lift you high, Yahweh, so we lift you high, Yahweh, we lift you high, Yahweh. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. And thousands, everybody sing Yeshu. Sing Yeshua, Yeshu. Uh, um, um, if you're sitting down right now, get up and sing Yeshu. Ooh. Uh, um, sing Yeshu. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And thousands, my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. Yeshu. Uh, 
Yeshua, Hamashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Chimba. Yeshua, Hamashia, Lion of Judah. Agunetchemba, sing Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah. Agunetchemba, sing Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia. Lion of Judah, Agunetchemba, sing Yeshua, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agunetchemba, Yeshua. Amashia, Lion of Judah, Agonetemba, Sing Yeshua, Yeshua, ah, 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 ah. Everybody sing Yeshua, Yeshua. Sing Yeshua, Yeshua. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You are good, Jesus, you are kind. And I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise. And forever to your name, 
You're my King, you're my Lord, you're the mighty man of war. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. Sing, you are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You're my King, you're my Lord. You make everything all right. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. Sing, you are good, you are kind. You make everything all right. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You're my king, you're my God. You're the mighty man of war. I'm devoted to your praise. And forever to your name, you are good, you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. Sing, I will worship you forever. Forever, because this God is too good. Oh, sing, I will worship you, Lord, I will worship you forever. Love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh. Sing, I will, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good, oh. Lord, I will worship you forever, love you forever because this God is so good. Oh. Sing this God, this God, this God is so good. Oh. oh Lord, we worship you. This God, you are so good. Oh. This God is so good. Oh. This God is too good, oh. This God, you're yeah, too good, oh. This God is too good, oh. Sing, I will worship, I will worship you forever. I love you forever because my God, you're yeah, too good, oh. And I will worship you forever, I love you forever, because this God is too good, oh, this God is too good, this God is too good, oh, oh this God is too good, oh. Sing, this God is too good, oh, this God is too good, oh, this God is too good, oh, this God is too good, oh.
And I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh. Thank you so much, Kayla, for that beautiful um, session of worship. Um, for those of us that do not know, Kayla is a pioneer member of a young and godly generation. She has grown to be a very beautiful young adult and God, you know, has been using her mightily and powerfully. Thank you so much again, Kayla. God bless you. So we are all welcome to another edition of Young and Godly Generation, the second for um, in 2024. And um, if... Uh, if you weren't around last month, the topic for last month was roadmap and it was very insightful. Please um, check um, the links on the recordings on Facebook and uh, you would not regret doing that. God bless you in Jesus name. Amen. So for today, as we're welcoming um, our speakers, please use the reaction, you know, let's give them some Jesus joy as we welcome them. And I just want us to know that uh, we are taking things differently. You know, we're having little spices here and there. So today we'll be having um, first person come, our first speaker coming to um, um, charge us for 15 minutes, the second person for 15 minutes. Trust me, those sessions are loaded. And finally, we're going to have the final cup up. Um, please, let's all be expectant, get your pen, get your um, writing materials, get your phones. And then, of course, you don't want to enjoy this alone. Invite your family, friends, you know, far and near. Just send them the link. Um, we can share the link in chat. Can someone help share the link in chat as well? The Facebook link. Let's just share it in chat so that people can send it um, to their friends, to their family um, everywhere. Uh, God bless us all as we do so in Jesus' name. So we'll move right into the first session and we'll be inviting a beautiful child of God. She's also a pioneer member of Young and Godly Generation and uh, God has prepared her specially to uh, talk to us today uh, with all joy. Let's welcome precious Olabode. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. From the mood of worship, let's begin to give God all the glory. Let's give him all the honor and adoration. Let's thank him for what he's done in our lives. Let's bless him and let's glorify his name because if not for him, we won't be alive today. Let's thank him. Let's give him all the glory. Let's say thank you, Jesus. You're the only reason why we're here this morning. You're the only reason why we're here to praise you. You're the only reason why we're here to see you. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to be able to know you, the privilege to be able to want to seek you and to want to know you more. Let's bless your name. Let's bless his name. Let's glorify his name. Let's continue to say thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor because without you, we wouldn't be here today. We bless your name and we glorify your name in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to commit what's, what, what we're going to speak on today. Let's ask God to come and teach us and to come and talk to us personally, to speak to that point in our lives that we need help with, oh Lord. Father, just come and speak to us today and come and reach out to us personally today in the name of Jesus. And let your Holy Spirit rule over today's today's service. Let your Holy Spirit rule. Don't let us speak from our heart. And don't let us speak just from our flesh. But let us speak from your mouth. Let us, let us speak your word today in the name of Jesus. And let's begin to commit our hearts. Let our hearts be open. Let's ask God to open our hearts to receive the word. Open our hearts to, to, to hear God's word, even, even if it's a little different today. Let's ask God to open our hearts to hear his word. And to be able to meditate on it even after we're done. Let's begin to bring our prayer to a close. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just want to uh, say, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak today. Um, it's really been a journey for me, especially this week. And I know that th the reason that God has helped me to, has put me on this platform will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Okay, so the topic that, was, that we, the thing we have today is called the focal point. And uh, when I was meditating on this word about 
almost a month ago when um Sister Adebi reached out to me. I didn't really have anything to say. I didn't really have uh like I wasn't it's not I wasn't I would say I wasn't really inspired, but God has really used many situations in my life to be able to help me to talk about this today. And um I hope that whatever I say, God will put it in our hearts in the name of Jesus. So Amen. our our anchor text today was is Matthew chapter six verse six verse thirty three, Matthew chapter six verse thirty three, and it says, "Seek the kingdom of God above all else." This is NLT version. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. He will give you everything you need. If we look at that in King James version, it says, "Seek ye first." First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And, you know, I know this is a very popular um, popular verse that a lot of people use to kind of set their path straight and make sure that they're looking unto God. So now we're going to look at what focal points means. When I search up focal points, it's it just starts talking about a bunch of physics stuff, and I'm not really a physics person, so I don't really focus on the on that kind of stuff. Well, I, I guess I'm a physics person, but... That's not what we're focusing on today. Well, focusing on today. So um, when I search up, I said that it's also a center of interest or activity, a center of interest or activity. And when we look at this, it means that the focal points, for example, if if you have a camera, for example, I have my phone right now. If you have a camera and you're filming something, there's always that part that is clear and every other part is blurred. So for the little kids who don't really understand what focal point means, whatever part is clear, or whatever part is that has the focus or the center is your focal point. So today God is trying to tell us to God is trying to remind us about our focal points and bring back our attention and bring our attention to the center. And who can who can only be your focal point except God and Jesus Christ? So it's trying to remind us that God has to be a focal point with whatever we do. So we can as we we can see that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, as we already read. That we should seek the kingdom of God first. We should seek God first. And then other things will be added unto us. So once we seek the kingdom of God, once we put our focus, then other things can follow. A lot, a lot of the reasons why us Christians nowadays, especially us teenagers, we always get distracted by other things is because we're trying to focus on other things. Or we're trying to put our um put all our mind on earthly desires or earthly needs. But God is trying to remind us here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that once we put our focus on God and the kingdom of God first, once we put our focus there, once our focal point, focal point is there, then other things can be added unto, added unto us. So um, also what I'll be talking about today is that why should God be our focal points? Why should God be our focal points? Number one, no one can get to God except through him. No one can get to Jesus. No one can get to God except through Jesus Christ. And we can see that in John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Please bear with me. In, in NLT version, it says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So God is trying to, Jesus is trying to reiterate that no matter what you're doing, for you to get whatever, like whatever your end point, whatever your end goal is. You know, we talked about road, road, um, the roadmap last last month you know for you to even get to that goal god has to be the way that you get through it he's the only way he said that i am the way the truth and like no one can come to the father except through me so for you to be able to be close to whatever goal you know especially as as um young adults or teenagers who are we're kind of getting more worried about our future for you to, be able to even get to that moment point in your life where you're like okay i've reached my goal for you to get through that part you have to go through jesus christ and he's, he was trying to remind us in that verse that he's the way, the truth, and the life. We can't do anything without him. We can't we can't even serve him, God properly without going through him. We can't do anything without him. We can't do good, good at school without him. Without having God in that way, without having God as the path to whatever goal, nothing we do can be accomplished. So this is just to, just to remind us, even if as we're going to school, even whether the little assignments, even just little periods beforehand works, you know, we have to go through, God is remind, Jesus Christ is reminding us that for us to get anything we want, we have an instrument that we're focusing on him alone and he's the way. Because once he becomes a focal point, then according to our, um, 
uh, to our anchor text, then everything else can be added up to us. So that, that's one of the reasons. Number one, the reason why he should be our focal point. Number two, the reason why Jesus Christ should be our focal point is because he's the perfect leader. He's the perfect leader. We can see that in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. And it says, God, for whom through everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus through the suffering a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. So in the book of Hebrews here, I was talking about why exactly, why, what God's plan was exactly to make Jesus Christ come down to earth to die for us. And it's just trying to say that one of the reasons why is because he's the perfect leader. He wants, he, he knew that once he's human, he'll be able to go through everything that we, whatever problems that we might have to go through in life, Jesus Christ has already gone through it. So if you want to, for example, if you want to, if you want to pass a test, or if you wanna um if you wanna reach a goal and there's someone that has done exactly has been through the exact situation where you've been through, it's only obvious that you look at who or you focus on who has gone through that situation before, right? So that's the reason why God is saying the Bible here is saying that just the perfect leader, he's gone through all these things. So all we need to do is focus on him alone. Once we focus on him alone, everything will come together, whatever. Like, for example, if you're sick, there's, there's always a part in the Bible that always reminds you what you should do when you're sick. If, if you're going through troubling times, you've been tempted. We have, the, we have the story of when Jesus Christ was being, tempted, was being tempted by the devil. So there's many things that we can do that, you know, it just just trying to show that Jesus is the perfect leader. That's how we, that's how we should know that he's our focal point. We need to focus on him alone because he's gone through everything. We can also see this in verse 18. It says, since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he's also able to help us when we are being tested. So when also we are being tested, when we are also going through many things in life, since he has already gone through it, gone through it all, what easier way or better way to go through a situation than to look at Jesus Christ himself? So that's another reason why Jesus Christ should be our focal point. Number three, why should, why, oh, number three of, um, why he should he be our focal point? He should also be our focal point because who else can be our focal point except God? Like, to be honest, Jesus is the only answer to everything. And, you know, there's nothing else that we can do except trust in him and focus and focus all our attention on him. And to, the next outline that I have is that how can we make God our focal point? How can we make Jesus Christ our focal point? You know, I already talked about why Jesus Christ should, make, should be our focal point. He's the perfect leader. He's gone through everything. He mentioned that he's the way, the truth, and the life. But how can we make God our focal point? You know, there's many things around us that the devil is trying to put, to trying to, to trying to bring us down. You know, every time I, I feel like I'm having, like, bad thoughts or something, then I use that as an encouragement. I know that because, because God has such a great plan for my life, the devil is trying so hard to bring it down. That's, like, um something that I have in my mind because like is the confidence I have in God that wait because the devil is trying so hard to do something to, to to bring me down or to bring my spirit down it means God has something so big that he wants to reveal so how so how can we be all these temptations of the devil and how can we make God our focal points or how can we make Jesus Christ our focal points number one we can sing praises in times of trouble we can sing praises in times of trouble for example for me one of the biggest ways that I overcome any time that I'm feeling down is always singing praises. I remember when I was in the when I was sick a little while ago. You know, praises is always something that brings my that brings your spirit up. Not only does it bring your spirit up, it takes your attention away from whatever you're going through. And you know, there's so many things about a song that that can help you. First of all, like not just the music, obviously, because you listen to the music, but you know, the lyrics. You know, focusing on God, listening to the Word of God, and you know, some that's is also a way to calm you, to take your attention away from whatever um, earthly things are around you and focus your attention on God. And we can see this in Psalm 103. Psalm 103. I'm just going to quickly read through the first few verses. It says, Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. So one of the things that that praising God does for you is that it reminds you of the good things that God has done for you. 
just the fact that we're alive today is already a good thing that God has done for us. A way to take our attention from the earthly things and to make sure that our focus is on God is about thinking about the good things that God has done for us. Thinking about the fact that we're alive today, the fact that we can see, we can talk, we can walk. Even if you're sick, the fact that you can even be able to have the opportunity to see that you're, you, you, to know that you're even sick. There's a lot of people that they don't know that they're sick and all of a sudden they die, right? So now there's so many things that we can be thankful for. And it says here that, let all that I am praise God, may I never forget the good things he's done for me. So once we're praising God, once we put all our attention on God, once we sing praises, even in times of trouble, no matter what situation we are, it takes our attention away from the evil things and puts our focal point on Jesus Christ. And we can also see this in Psalm 69, verse 29 to 32. I won't really dwell deep on that, but we can read that when we're, even after Psalm 69, verse 29 to 32, it also talks about, even just the whole book of Psalms also always talks about giving thanks to God, praising Him, no matter what circumstances you are. So take your attention away from everything else around the world that's trying to shake your mind, that's trying to shake your spirit and put your attention on God. And another po and a popular story that we know of is a, a story of Paul and Silas. You know, they were in jail, but, you know, it said that there's that song, they pray, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down. So, you know, they were able to take their attention away from whatever shackles that they had on their hands, take their attention away from whatever whatever burden or whatever thing that they, they knew that they had to overcome. But instead, they prayed and they sang unto God. And, you know, that's a way that we can take our attention off God. It's, it's like a, it's like a double-edged sword. No, number one, you're taking your attention off the things of the world and putting, yeah, you're pushing on God. Secondly, you're also praising God. What other way can you please God than to praise God? You know, we all know that once God is pleased, once God is praised, there's mighty things that he can do, right? So, number one way, which is also my favorite way to take my attention away from everything and put my focal points on Jesus Christ, is to praise God, even in times, sorry, it's to praise God even in times of trouble. So I have to hurry up a little bit. And then the other story that we have is the wall of Jericho. I know we we also a song also comes with that the wall of Jericho fell down. So the children of God were praising God, they were blowing their horns. And it doesn't always have to be song. Instruments is also good. You can clap for Jesus Christ, you can sing, you can, you know, you can drum. There's many things that you can do to be able to praise God that will bring the that will bring the focus away from everything else and put it on Jesus Christ. Now, another thing that we can do to make sure that our focus our focal point is on God is to go to God in prayer and to focus on his promises. Once we go to God in prayer, we it's like we're forgetting everything else that's going around us and we're focusing on God alone. Once you whoever you're talking to is the person that's going to be the focus of the attention. Once you're talking to God about it, then that's the way to Put your focus on God and remind yourself of his promises. Don't forget to remind yourself of his promises. Um, you know, in times of trouble, like for example, in Psalm 91, if we can read that later, everyone knows that verse, but it talks about many promises that he's gonna do to us. When when we're when we're feeling down, go to God in prayer, remind yourself of his promises. Then it puts your attention on God and says, Oh, I, I don't need to worry about whatever is going on in my life because I know that God is gonna do this according to his word. So use the word of God to back you up. We also have the anchor says, my chapter 6, verse 22. Every other thing will be added onto you. There's many verses that you can use to back yourself up when you're going to God in prayer and focusing on his promises. And we can see in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. And it says, Then David asked the Lord, Should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, Yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken away from you. So, you know, focus on God. Don't be asking, don't keep asking yourself questions when you're going through them ask god don't just ask yourself questions don't always be focusing on like don't focus too much on your thoughts think about god talk to god when you're times of trouble talk to god now number three the number three way that we can focus our attention on god is to completely trust in him we can see that in ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 and proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and we can read that in our own time and then Psalm 7, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37 and 45, this is the story of David and Goliath. When, um, you know, David had complete trust in God. He was able to use the way that you, God has used him before. You know, the way he was able to watch over his, watch over the sheep that, you know, his dad put in his um coverage. He was able to use that and take that trust from there and put it on God. And you know, to have that confidence that I know that God can do this. So put your complete trust. Trust in God. The I think the Proverbs are three verses. Says, trust in God with all your heart and lean on lean not on your own understanding. So if you don't lean on your own understanding, like I said, don't think about too many things. 
only think about God, only talk to God. Once you relay your thoughts to God, that's a way to focus your attention on God. And number four is to keep his word in your heart. We can say that in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, where it says that the book of the Lord shall not depart from thy heart, but that's I meditate on it day and night. I know it talks about God's promises after. It says that we'll have good success. So, you know, for us to be successful in whatever we do, we need to make sure that we keep the word of God in our hearts. And I know this is actually like, this is a really hard thing for me, especially because, you know, as, as a teenager, we focus, we kind of like depend more on our devices and stuff. I, for example, I have my phone right now looking at the Bible verses, but, you know, we need to make sure that we need to try, to hard, try harder to meditate on the word of God and to make sure that the word of God is on our hearts. And number five, the last one is to surrender everything to God, to surrender all that we have to God. We can see that in Psalm 37, verse 5. Psalms 37, verse 5. And then it says, commit everything you do to the Lord, trust him, and he will help you. So commit everything you do to the Lord. When you wake up in the morning, ask him to take out of everything you're doing. Surrender all to God. And once you surrender all to God, then your focus will be on God alone. And, you know, especially even, even I feel like one of the things that we try to do as Christians, you know, our goal is to not sin, to make it to heaven. But one thing I found that once you're focusing so much on the sin, you end up sinning. But once you focus on God once you focus on God and you're like, okay, I, I'm going to please God today. You start thanking God. You start doing, the, you just do the normal thing you're doing, God. You pray to God. You know, the Holy Spirit will lead you through the day and help you not to sin. But once you focus so much on the sin, then your thoughts is going to go there. The devil knows how to put evil thoughts in your head. But once you focus on God, you're clouding up whatever space that the devil can put in your head to try to take your attention away from God. So, um, that's all I have. So number, like I said, we need to surrender everything to God most importantly. And, you know, but if you don't surrender all your things to God, you won't be able to focus and make it, make Jesus Christ your focal point. And let's begin to, um, that's all I have. Let's begin to thank God for the word that he's given us today. And that's going to help us to focus on him. I said, Father, please help us to focus on you and put you at the center of our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, please help us to focus on you and put you at the center of our lives in the name of Jesus, Lord. And in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Precious, for that beautiful session. That was so much light in packed in just a few minutes. God bless you abundantly. I have a whole lot of takeaways. Thank you for, you know, first defining um, what focal point means, just for, you know, some of us that are on, on the call today that we don't know the, the meaning. And you have also helped us to identify who our focal point should be and why it should be our focal point. He is the perfect leader, you know, the perfect example. And, you know, the one that struck me, you said that, you know, we should sing praise. How can, you know, you put uh, God as your focal point? You praise God in time of trouble. And I'm amazed. I thought, oh, young people think we should only praise God when things are rosy. We should always give thanks at all times and in every situation. Thank you so much for that light. And that was a very beautiful session. God is not done with us yet. God is not done with us yet. So we'll roll uh, right now into the next session. And God has prepared another son of ease, you know, to feed us, who is also another um, pioneer member of young and godly generation and now you know he's an undergrad join me with jesus joy as we welcome ife olua tawoshe thank you ife over to you much appreciated ma thank you i want to just firstly appreciate all the leaders of young and godly especially my mom if you don't know and today is my mom um and if you guys want to, you know, celebrate anyone, please celebrate her. We bless God for her life, all the leaders, all the wisdom and teachings we've had over the years. Thank you, Father. We pray, Lord, as we go into your word that you teach us, help us to understand your word, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Time is 9.44. I should be done by 10. Thank you, Ma. All right. Hopefully, people will be able to see my screen. Just let me know if things are not, things, things should be working, sure. Can, can I see? Yeah, looks good. good. Yeah. All right. The focal point of our sights, for those who are interested in Shakespeare or have heard Shakespeare, you should know what this is coming from, to see or not to see. And we'll get to that in just a bit. But let's start with some, uh, oh, I can't, start with some definitions and prelude. 
before we start. So what's the focal point? What is a focal point? Uh, I know I learned this in high school, but then I forgot the definition. So I went back to Google for, for it. And it says the point at which rays or waves meet after reflection or refraction, or the point from which diverging rays or waves appear to proceed. Now, to some people that might not make a lick of sense. And to me, I too was confused for a second. But in other words, this is just saying the focal point is where everything needs to meet and where everything needs to originate from. I'll take that again. Our, the focal point for any human being in our lives, for any person, is where everything meets and where everything originates from. So let's take a look at glasses or contact lenses to help understand what that means. So I said here, the eyeball isn't too complex. I gave you a picture here and we'll talk about that. So there's a few ways for our, our sight to be out of focus. I don't know if people here, you know, if you have glasses, you should, you you would know that uh, it's it's quite annoying to try and look at something and it's it's blurry. It's You can still see it, but you're not seeing the complete picture, right? And that's because of this right here. So what this here is showing is, um, I mean, this point here, is light coming in as you see something and it's supposed to focus on a single point at the back of your eye. That's what it's supposed to do. For some people, it doesn't focus right there. And for some people, it focuses too far away. So in either case, you will not see clearly. There's only one location where things are sustainable. And we call that place the retina in biology. So that's where your, the light has to focus for you to see an image clearly. If it's too short or it's too far, you will miss the target. And the further your focus is from the critical point, the worse your vision is. So if your focal point is here compared to something like here, if it's here, it's gonna be really bad. Uh, but that's just a little background. Let's look at it through the Bible and see what the Bible says about this. So let's define, first of all, what our focal point for our purposes is supposed to be. Understanding our previous definition, it's where everything is supposed to originate from and it's where everything is supposed to meet. And I will just read here, Hebrews chapter 12, verse two. And it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus himself is the author, so that is where everything originates from, and the finisher, where everything is supposed to meet, of the most important aspect of our lives, that is our faith. And what is faith? I'm sure everyone knows, but I will read again Hebrews 11, 1 to 3, and 39 to 40. It says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are visible were not, were not made of things which are visible. And 39 to 40 says, and all these things having, and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Mm. In other words, again, if we allow Jesus Christ to be our focus, if our focus point, we have a clear image of our faith. Remember, we look unto Jesus, and through him we see our faith, because he is the author and finisher of our faith. We know that things, however, can go wrong. So how do we then fix it? Let's take a look at glasses again. So why do people wear glasses? Is because they want to correct the visual errors caused by their own eyes, right? It's supposed to offset the unfocusing of our eyes. Either you're short-sighted or long-sighted, the lens of our eyes are not focusing the light correctly. And the lens of the glasses will work together with our own lens to produce a clear image, right? You people know that you see things differently when you wear glasses it's because those lens are focusing the light differently so in our kingdom language what are the glasses we are supposed to wear you know because as human beings our eyes don't really work too well spiritually what are those what are the glasses we're supposed to wear and the answer is the holy spirits if we read john 16 13 just give me a second i will open this up on my handy dandy bible 
John chapter 16, verse 13. Or if you're there, you can read before me. That's perfectly fine as well. <clears throat> All righty, I got it. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what he's going to do for us. He's going to tell us things to come. He's going to be the spirit of truth. He's going to teach us things. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, uh, again, give me just a second. 3.18, it says, uh, here it is. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, see those words, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image that is Jesus Christ from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what is the Holy Spirit supposed to do in our lives as Christians? He's going to help us become more and more like Christ. He's going to transform us. He's going to correct our vision so that we can focus more on Christ. Even when we struggle to focus on Christ, the Holy Spirit will serve as the glasses, in quote, that refocuses us. Now, onto the actual truth of the matter. We'll leave the analogy for a while here. Is that when we don't have Jesus Christ as our focus, our vision isn't just blurry. We are completely blind without Christ. If you don't believe me, I'll read some verses for you. In that Second Corinthians 3, 16, it says, uh, here it is, nevertheless, when one turns, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So we can use that to reverse engineer that verse and say, if we don't turn to the Lord, the veil is not taken away. And with a veil over your face, you cannot see. In Second Corinthians 4, verse 4, it says, it says this. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, uh, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. That is to say, without Christ, that God of this world, that God of this age has blinded people. We cannot see without Jesus Christ as our focus. So let's do some recap just here for it. Uh, we now know how to see. We know that we can overcome that through Jesus Christ. But let's just go over some of the key points. Who is our focus point? What are we supposed to be focusing on? Jesus, right? What is the image we are trying to see as we focus on Jesus? We're still trying to see Jesus, right? But Jesus is also equivalent to our faith. And we know through the scripture that our faith is equivalent to our salvation. How do we actually focus on Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, as it's told in Romans 8.26. And if one is to refuse, and this is the most critical part, if you are to refuse, that's perfectly fine, but you are blind. So that's not fine, actually, because you will only stumble in the darkness. You know, imagine trying to walk through a, uh, just a city, right? You're trying to walk through the city at night, no lights out, no stars out, the moon's gone. You can't see your way, right? If I was to do this right now, and just press the V button. You know, there's still something there. Hope you know. But because I have now blinded you, you can't see what's there. So I'll take that back and we can come back to the slides. So here's a few key things to note about our vision. Number one, it doesn't matter how good your vision is. You need light to see. First Peter 2, 9, and it says this. Uh, I need to open First Peter first and foremost. 2.9, it says, you guys know this, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He needed to take us out of darkness because as we know, as we've seen before, we cannot see when there is darkness. We need the lights to see. What that means is this message does not mean anything to people who don't have Christ because Christ is that light that allows us to see. Amen. Number two, it doesn't matter how good the quality of your vision is. If you turn away, your focus changes. And remember what we said about when your focus isn't on Christ, you're blind. We'll go and check this in Matthew and see somebody who mistakenly changed their focus to something else. You might know his name as Peter. And I'll read verse 30. It says, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, this is Peter. He was afraid and beginning to sink and cried out saying, Lord, save me. 
what did he see? He saw, he wasn't seeing Jesus here. He saw, however, that the wind was boisterous. He took his focus away from the one who called him out of the boat onto the water. And now he's looking at the situation around him. And then that is the moment he started to sink. He was not sinking as he walked across the water, right? He was still defying gravity all along the journey. But the moment he turned his focus away from Christ, he became blind and he began to sink. So no matter how good your vision is, it becomes hard to see when you stand far away. We know that the further you get away from something, the smaller it starts to seem. The further you get away from Christ, the smaller he seems in your life. Get close to God. Get close to Jesus Christ. Then he becomes bigger than all your problems, all your worries, all your stress, every deadline and assignment you have he becomes bigger than all of that if only you get close to him but if you stay far away now it looks like anything and everything can just come and take that place and you start to focus on different things and we know that if we focus on different things things start to go wrong number four no matter how good your vision is it is hard to see when there are obstructions in view uh for those of us who drive we know that. You know, things become very different when there's fog around you versus when it's a clear and sunny day, right? You can't see as far. You can't see as clearly when there's fog. Just like if you allow obstructions to come in your way, you can't see Jesus Christ just as well. And remember, the critical thing is that we are trying to always focus on Christ because if we don't, we become blind and we walk through darkness. God forbid. Number five, it is possible to have eyes and still refuse to see. Matthew 13, 14, and that says, uh, there it is. Oh, that's not it. That's 16, 14, and it says, and in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. It is very easy for us to look at something and not see the true meaning behind it. See, this is also the um, source of optical illusions. Now, an optical illusion is when you look at something and it looks completely different from what it's actually drawn as or what it's actually portrayed as. You see something very different. That is to say that our eyes can play tricks on us. It is only through the Holy Spirit that we can get a clear image. And I pray to God that we will all receive a clear image of God in Jesus' name. Amen. That is the end. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you very much, Ife. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Wasn't that a very beautiful session? I love that definition of focal points where everything, you know, originates from, you know, and where everything, uh, where everything meets and originates from. Awesome. Awesome. And I like those analogy, you know, it, it makes it clearer and easier for us to understand. And once we take away our focus from Jesus, we begin to see any and everything the list is nameless fear and all that so uh the lord will help us as we keep our focus the holy spirit that too that too will help us in the name of jesus the holy spirit is a powerful you know powerful person of god that will help us keep our focus on jesus thank you if again god bless you abundantly in the mighty name of jesus Amen. We'll be going to the final session today. And uh, um, this session will also at the end have questions and answers. So if you have questions, you can send the questions to myself, Auntie Debbie, or you can also, um, you know, Auntie Debbie or myself. Yeah, basically. So send the question. Also, this is the final session. You might want to share the link, the Facebook link the YouTube link, they're all in chat. You can uh, send them to your friends, whoever, your family, everyone, everyone. Let's not enjoy this alone. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we'll be introducing our last, God is not done with us yet. You know, is is prepared the best for the last. <laughs> oh, so I uh, will be introducing our last speaker. And, um, that will be uh, Olufun Shaw Steve Olofinlade, also known as Dr. Steve. He is a brother and a minister of the good news of Jesus. His passion is in challenging and enabling the original mind to think the thoughts of God, acquire unlimited mind of Christ, and being able to live the supernatural 
life naturally. His pursuit after God is motivated by this possibility. The life that I can live in my soul and body, I can live it by faith of Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. This passion has been expressed in various platforms where Dr. Steve has been and is still teaching, mentoring, equipping both young and old to acquire the unlimited life of Christ. Unlimited mind of Christ, sorry. Dr. Steve is a doctor of veterinary medicine and also a master's of business administration. He currently works as an organizational development leader in a government agency. He is happily married to Ola Nike, and they are blessed with beautiful children. Join me as we welcome my friend, my brother, my rabbi, our very own Dr. Steve. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Sister Nike, for that introduction. And um, good morning to everyone. If you're in this part of the world and wherever you might be, good evening, um, wherever you might be calling from or joining us from, thank you so much for investing the time to be part of this. And I pray that as you have, you know, set aside time to really invest in your future, in your growth, I pray that the that God Himself will ensure that this time that you have spent, indeed, you will reap abundantly hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I also want to thank um, the earlier speakers, Nifemi and Ife. Thank you so much. I'm not sure that there is so much to be said after those brilliant, um, wonderful <laughs> contributions. In fact, I was like, I think I should have come first and just allow both of you to sort of wrap this up but we thank god um i won't take too much of time because we're already out of time i will just go over a few things that i feel i'd like to leave us with um just i will share my screen now and then we'll just run through that um, in the name of jesus let's just pray father we ask in the precious name of jesus that lord even as we share that lord you will ensure that every life is touched, every life is blessed, every ear is lifted, every spirit is lifted in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, can you please give me host privilege on this one here that I'm speaking from, please, if it's possible? Okay, perfect. It's Bakuna. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to share the screen here. And then just let me know if you can see my screen here. Okay, so I just wanted to leave us with just very quickly um, seven, I would call them questions to help keep our focus on Christ, to help keep our focus on Christ. Like I said earlier, God bless you, Ife, and God bless you, Nifemi, for the exposition that you've brought to us, very, very insightful, very practical. Um, thank you, Nifemi, for sharing really particularly about your experiences and how you've been able to apply that. And Ife, thank you for the analogy that you've brought around how we can keep our focus and also relating that to the use of the eyeglasses. But just seven quick questions very quickly. And the introduction, which um, Nifemi has also mentioned, as well as Ife, is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. That's the anchor scripture. I, I thought to bring this to you in just very simple um, reading so that you can easily identify. Now, just read with me. It's on the screen. My encouragement to you and encouragement to everyone that is listening or will even listen in the future is that you should soak your life in God. You see, soak your life. Don't worry about missing out. You know, there's something called the fear of missing out that really plagues and worries um, people today. Please do not worry about missing out. Why? Because every time that you spend in God's presence is never a waste. 
And so as you invest time to knowing this Christ, to put him, to focusing your attention on him, you will just find that every, all of your everyday human concerns will be met. Everything will be met. Everything, it would get to a point where you don't even have to pray for needs anymore. You know why? Because your father already knows what you need. Before you even think or ask about it, he's already provided it for you. Okay, so that's very important for you to note. Also remember that everything started. I really like how Ife put it. He says that, you know, the focal point is where everything meets and where everything originates from. Very powerful and insightful. And Colossians 1.18 couldn't have put it any better. It says, everything started. And I also added, and starts in Christ. And everything also finds its purpose in Christ. It was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together up to this moment. And there will come a time when it would organize everyone, organize everything so that he will become the head over the body. So remember that you, your life, everyone starts in Christ. And that's really the essence why we have to make him a focal point. And like if you had referenced, he said that, you know, Jesus is the author, you see, the beginning and the end where it meets. So very important for us to keep in mind. So the first question I have for you today is, what is God's big plan for you? What is God's big plan for you? What is God's big plan for you? I hope you can see. Can you still see the slides, though? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you. So what is God's big plan for you and I? You see, God's plan really is just in time to bring all creation together, you and I, as his harvest. Everything in heaven and on earth with Jesus Christ as the head of it all. God wants you and I to be part of his body so that he can then be the head over us all. So that the anointing that is on him can flow down to you, down to the body. And so God from the beginning had this in mind. That is his big plan. He knew exactly what he was doing from the beginning. And so his goal is really to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as his son, Jesus Christ. That is his goal. And you can find that in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. So when we encourage people to give their life to Christ, it's not a call to a life of shame. It's actually an invitation to a life that helps you aspire to so much greatness in life. Because what God's promised to you is to start to help you shape your life so that you are not different, you, you cannot be differentiated, you cannot be separated. Uh, it would be as if Christ lives through you. You see, as I put the last comment here, God's plan is that you and I will live our lives as if Christ lives through us. That is his goal. So when people sorry not- to sir. Sorry, yes, sorry to um, interrupt, sir. The slides aren't moving. They're not moving for you. Yes. Ooh. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing and share. Oh, it's, it's moving now. It seems to be moving now. Has it moved? Yes. Yes. Thank you very okay. much. I'm not sure why it's not. So I will, I will remove myself from um, full screen share and then just move with this one. Okay. The second point here. Yeah, perfect. The... Course, the second one, so the first point, just to go over that again, is what is God's big plan for you and me, okay? And his plan, I've summarized here, is that you and I live our lives as if Christ lives through us. God wants Christ to live through you. God wants Christ to live through me. And you might be asking, what exactly is the benefit of this? We'll come to that in a bit. But let's move to the second question that I want to leave you with. Now, what does it mean? What does this big plan mean for you and I? It's simple. It's just an invitation to you and I to make a conscious decision to shape our lives after Jesus Christ. Now, if you have not made that decision today, I am inviting you 
to make that decision for Christ and tell God, just wherever you are, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to shape my life after Jesus Christ. Help me, Lord, and bring me into this family of yours that my life can start to be patterned, be shaped after Christ. So in shaping our lives after Christ, this includes how we think, how we speak, how we behave, how we relate with others. You see, and the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it's saying, don't become so well adjusted to the culture around you that you fit into it without even giving it a thought. It says, instead, fix your attention on Jesus Christ. You see, make him your focal point, make him your focus. Now, when you make Christ your focus, you will be changed from the inside out. I'd like you to note that. It's from the inside out. You see, what Jesus does is it brings the best out of you and develops the well-formed maturity in you. So, you see, this call for us to pattern and shape our lives after Christ is such a noble cause. It's a noble cause. You will never, you are never missing out. It's actually the best thing for you to invest your time and your effort on. Okay. So the first question that we've considered that I'm leaving you with is what's God's big plan? The second is what does this plan mean for you and me? All right. Now let's go to the third question. Why then is it important for us to keep our attention on Christ? Number one, we see we become what we focus our sights on. And our energy tends to go in the direction where our attention goes. So we become what we focus our sights on and our energy tends to go in the direction where attention goes. I have two boys and I know that there is one of them who watches um, is, is picked interest in just soccer games very lately. And he will watch for a minute. The next thing he's saying, you know, that I'm coming, I'm going um, downstairs. And the next thing you hear him jumping, kicking the ball and all those things. You see, what is focused his sights on is directing his energy towards that. You see, we tend to direct an, our energy towards where our attention goes the most. Some of you can literally sing the lyrics of certain songs. You can um, almost ad lib even the, the, the voices or whatever, even in certain movies that you've seen, because you've seen them over and over again. But, you know, the scripture that um, if I also read applies here very significantly it says, all of us, nothing. I just want to read it in another version for you. All of us, that means you and I, nothing between us and Christ. And we'll come to that in a bit. Like what can be in between us at Christ? It says our faces shining with the brightness of his face because there is nothing just in between us and him. So we are transfigured or transformed much like Christ into that very image. And our lives gradually becomes brighter, more beautiful as God, the life of God starts to enter our life and we become like Christ. So number one, it means that Christ is exceedingly beautiful. Christ is exceedingly brighter than you can even think of. And as we keep him in view, his life enters us and we become like him. So two important points, we become what we focus our sights on and our energy goes in the direction where our attention goes. Now let's move to the fourth point. Having considered why it is important to keep our attention on Jesus Christ, then let's think about, let's ask ourselves then, what does focus really mean? What does it mean to focus? Okay, and here I just put a very simple um, definition here. Focus is a person's or your ability, because we all have it, to concentrate on a specific goal without being distracted, you see? It's your ability to just concentrate without being distracted. And as humans, we have the ability to focus on things that are physical, things that we can see, as well as focus on things 
that we cannot see. So the things that we cannot see are called invisible. The things that we can see are called visible. Okay, so for example, Elisha set a goal in his heart of becoming twice as effective as Elijah. Now, you couldn't see the goal. The only way that we learned about the goal was that he said it out. When Elijah asked him what he wanted. And as a result of that, by focusing on the things that are invisible, he was able to channel the power of focus in order to get rid of the distractions that are visible in order to be able to acquire that which is invisible. For example, you know, three times Elisha said to Elijah, not on your life. I am not letting you out of my sight. You know why? There were so many distractions. Many of them are physical. That was a potential roadblock or stumbling block to Elisha achieving his goal of becoming twice as effective as Elijah. You see, that goal cannot really be seen. So if some of you say, you know, I want to be even twice or three times as better than I am, for example, you know, you can't really see that goal, but it's something that you keep in your heart. Or if you set a goal and say, I want to be like Jesus, you can't see that goal. But as you keep your focus on that goal internally, as you deploy the power of internal focus, what would happen is that your outside life starts to get transformed to that picture that you have kept in your inside. You see, that is why the promise is you will be transformed from the inside out, from the inside out. So that is important for us, therefore, to think about how then, what are some of the benefits you know, of, of um, being like Christ, of keeping a focus on Christ. What are some of the benefits? Very quickly, number one, you acquire the ability of Christ. Number two, you acquire the wisdom of Christ. Number three, you can acquire the intelligence of Christ. Number four, you can acquire the riches and wealth of Christ. You can also acquire the strength of Christ. You acquire the honor of Christ. You acquire the blessing of Christ. And so much more. As far as your eyes can see, as far as you can keep your focus on the person of Christ. These are the things that really drives and motivates me every day. And I want to encourage you to be motivated by them. It just begins with a simple question, you know, asking, what does the ability of Christ looks like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? How do you experience it? Just by asking that question, like if you had mentioned an Ifemi, you are inviting the Holy Spirit to start to explain that element to you. And that can take a long time for you to even fully understand it. So the journey of being like Christ is an enjoyable journey, very enjoyable. There is no end to it. There is the ability of Christ that can become yours. There is the wisdom. Oh, my God. Then the intelligence of Christ. What an awesome wonder. You know, people would listen to you and they wonder where on earth have you been? Where are you coming from? This is what we've been waiting for. That is the intelligence of Christ. And you can also be wealthy. You can be wealthy. Wealthy to, to the wildest, I mean, beyond your wildest imaginations. Only if we can keep a focus on Christ. Now, the sixth and second to the last question is, what then is your role in focusing your attention on Christ? Number one is reduce all competing distractions. For example, are there some relationships that are not Christ-friendly? Reduce them. Do you do excessive TV? I would say reduce them. You know, do you oversleep sometimes? Cut down on them. Do you have, do you listen to inappropriate music? 
you have to cut down on them. You know, laziness is also a way that it reduces us. It, it I mean, it it um it hinders us from focusing on Christ because you also have to come to the table. You can focus your attention on him by turning your thoughts on Christ. You see, and as you think deeply about Christ, what happens is the life of Christ begins to be released. It's like you're opening a tap and then that life begins to flow into your heart. You see, and so when you look at the scripture, I want to sum this up for you, friends, and say to you that do your very best by filling your minds. Imagine that gate before your mind and you are in control of that gate and fill your mind and meditate on thoughts that are true, thoughts that are noble, thoughts that are gracious, thoughts that are Christ-like. So that the very life of Christ can start to find expression and over time it would be released deep in your heart. And you know what? It wouldn't take long before people start to see the evidence of that thoughts in you, the evidence of Christ living in you. Now, final question as we wrap up. What is God's final charge to you? today. Number one, here is what I want you to do. Um, okay, before we go to the question, I will just stop here. So where are some um, places where we can get the thoughts of Christ from? Number one, um, you can get them from the scripture, which contains the thoughts of God. Number two, you can get them from godly counsel from your parents. You can get them from your mentors. You can get the thoughts from godly music or Christ-friendly music. For example, like if I had said, you know, music has the ability to lift your spirit. It's just the thoughts of God accompanied by sound or music. You know, so those songs can also inspire the thoughts of Christ in you. You can get them from messages as well. You can get the thoughts of Christ from your association. So be mindful of who you are associating with. Are they those that can inspire you to press on for the thoughts of Christ? And you can get the thoughts of Christ from platforms like this. Young and Godly is a place where you come to learn about the thoughts and the life of Christ so that you can be a sign and a wonder everywhere you are. Just like Nifemi had mentioned, Trust me, if you make Christ your focus, you will not need to struggle to pass any test because Christ has already passed all tests for you. You see, you can find so much strength in him that you would live a life that would amaze you and amaze everyone around you. My final charge, which is really God's charge to you, here is what I want you to do. Ask for God's help. You see, but take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, your going to work, your going to school, your conversations, your relationships, and place it before God as an offering so that God can take that and then allow the life of Christ to flow through them. You can sleep and you can enjoy Jesus. You can eat and you can enjoy Christ. It is beyond our limitations or the mind. It's much more than all that we see and think. And I want to encourage you to embrace God's plan, which is the best thing that you can do for yourself. And I pray that God will bless you, everyone, as you've listened, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I hope Amen. that I haven't taken too much of time, but yeah, very quickly. <laughs> that's it. No. I want to share. God bless yeah, us all. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. You're still, um, I mean, our time is fast spent, but you have used the time wisely and it's been worth the while. Thank you so much. And I just want to share one of my take, take, take home, and which was the first thing you said. <laughs> Don't think you are missing out 
when you're focusing on God. Because most of the time, that's the reason why we shift our focus and we start running those races, or we start competing, or we start doing all those things. But once we are rest assured that we are not missing anything when you focus on God, it becomes easier to focus on God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can everybody hear me? Oh, my, my screen was blank for a second. <laughs> okay, perfect. Can everybody hear me still? Yes. Okay, perfect. At least we can all hear. So we have, uh, God bless you again, Dr. Steve. God bless you abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And it would, you know, um, um, it will bless you. You have blessed us with the word. You have brought the word to us. It will bless you in return in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you once again, sir. Um, we have a few questions for you and um, we're, we're believing God that you do justice to them. So the first question was, says that, uh, you know, um, in, in, in your teaching, you had mentioned, you know, how we should focus on God and, you know, steps that we need to take, you know, what you watch, what you do, you know, to, to focus on God. So if we have tried to focus on God and we are still finding it difficult, you know, we have tried to watch the, um, so to listen to the right music, but we still cannot. I still really want to listen to the wrong music. I still really want to do all those other things that, you know, keeps my attention from Christ. How do I go on from that? That is a very good question, and God bless whoever has asked that question. Number first thing I would ask is, you haven't done everything. <laughs> Do not think that you've done everything. That's the first thing. We have not, you see, the word of God has to be the ultimate. If God says that there is that you can't do anything, then you can, because with God, all things are possible. The first thing I would say is, first, ask God for help. Because these are things that you cannot do by your own power. So don't be too bothered about your inability to self-discipline yourself. I want you to first ask God and turn to God genuinely and say, Lord, I am struggling in this area. You see, God loves a very genuine individual. That is all. Very honest. I think honest is the word. You see, honesty is God's, God cannot resist a honest person. Say, Lord, I'm struggling in this area. I have tried everything humanly possible in order to get myself into, you know, focusing on Christ. But these are the areas I'm struggling and you're itemizing it. I'm struggling in the area of listening to good music. I'm struggling in the areas of keeping my eyes off. X, Y, Z, you are not hiding anything from him because he knows anyway. I'm struggling in this area. Now, Lord, I need your help and he will help you. Now, you have to be willing to listen to him because somewhere along the line is going to talk to you, either through people, either through situations, circumstances, your parents, your friends, somehow he's going to talk to you, but you have to be ready to listen. Number two, is that is what I want to hop on what Ife, um, Nifemi had mentioned. Nifemi said that we have a perfect role model in Jesus. But you see, Jesus also operates through people. That is why you've got mentors. You've got people that you can reach out to. I want you to speak out, right? There are people that have gone through what you have gone through. You don't need to go through those pains again where you're struggling. Speak out, call for help. I am struggling here, help me. Speak to Auntie Debbie, speak to Auntie Nike, speak to anyone that you feel can support you. Ask for help. Do not think that you can do it alone, okay? You've called to God for help, now it is time to speak out. And let that support system help hold you accountable for the right behaviors, the right attitude, the right things you have to do, eliminating all distractions so that you can keep. The goal really is just to, <clears throat> excuse me, is to guide you to offer that counsel that can help you succeed in areas that you find the most struggle. And I pray that God will help you. So two things, don't forget, be very honest with God. He sees you already. He knows your area of struggles. He's just waiting for you to reach out to him. Number two, speak out. 
speak out. There is help. There is help. Someone can help you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Steve. Before we continue, we still have quite, quite a number of questions. Please, um, if you are new today, can you just uh, um, drop your contact, your name, and uh, maybe phone number or email, how we can reach you in chat. We'd like to know you and you're welcome. We're very pleased and happy to have you today. God bless you as you do so. And if you also said that prayer with Dr. Steve, let's welcome you into the body of Christ. Um, drop your name and drop your details. I mean, you can even send it straight to Dr. Steve, you know, and the Lord will bless you as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we go to the next question. It says, if men are blind without focusing on Christ, you know, we had mentioned, you know, during our teaching that once we're not focusing on Christ, we are blind. How come they still achieve outstanding landmarks? Like, you know, they have great influences, they're wealthy, stuff like that. Yeah, that's a very good question. And that's a question we would all have to um, contend with. You know, like you said, you know, the fear of missing out and all of those things are real because we look outside and we see people even without Christ in court that are doing great things. You see, when God created everyone, he has given us the will to be able to um, what you call occupy the earth, you know, ideas can come because in a, in a way God has created all of us in his image. Okay. Now in that image that he has created us, he has also given us certain gifting, certain strength that we all have. So some people, you know, they can, they are very good in innovation, in technology, in creatives, in art, in all of those things, as anybody is. Now, but what happens when we ask people to give their life to Christ is that you can do things in the way that God wants it to be done, in a way that preserves the idea and the plan of God. Because you see, many of the guys that are out there doing great things, many times they're, they're, all that they do are sometimes, oftentimes polluted. You see, the pollution doesn't come advertently. I like, can't find it. <laughs> I love what you use that. Sometimes along the line, it becomes, I think the word I'm looking for is compromised. You see, because I, I was listening to... Um, um, to, I was watching a video really, and I was I watched the last Super Bowl, and I didn't watch the Super Bowl. It was just I didn't watch it. It was just a video, and in that video there was this artist who you probably some of you might know, very famous, very wealthy, but you see behind the scenes they were making satanic signs. You see, some of those things it comes at a price. They were making very cryptic satanic signs that you wouldn't even know. There's also a friend of mine that, you know, I think after a while, when he got to the top, he was so good. He made lots of money. At some point, cultists, and when I mean cultists, I mean people from the other world, they had to visit him and say, you cannot continue to sit on this kind of success without you joining us. It's just not possible. Right. So what Christ is saying is I can give you all of those things and I would ensure that it comes with no sorrow. You will be happy. You will be fulfilled. You would live a life of victory. You would live a life that is free of encumbrance. You will not be in a state where you have apprehensions, fear. You know, someone is breathing down my back because it will make everything right and ensure that, you know, the, the right process is what you follow and you will not be compromised. Overall, you will now have the assurance, even though I am wealthy on earth, I have a place in heaven I'm going to. Okay, that is really the most important thing, that you can be successful here and yet you sleep and say, Lord, on your last, your last breath, you can say, Father, I'm just grateful because you are going to accept me. I have not soiled my hand, whether knowingly or unknowingly. I have not sold my soul to the devil in exchange for the world, which is indeed you have been my supply. I have also excelled. 
but I have put Christ before me in my pursuit of life. I hope that that answers a little bit, at least to some extent. Awesome. I, I believe that was a very good answer. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We have treasure here on that. And then we have the, the, the promise of a beautiful eternal life. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Our next question. Um, very Another beautiful question here. It says, sometimes um, what makes me reluctant um, to, on focusing on God completely is that my mom, has given her life to God. She worships him every day. She spends a lot of time praying and she still hasn't gotten all the things promised by all her pastors. So <laughs> help us. Well, <laughs> so. I think this is a very um, interesting question. First, I would encourage you to please reach out personally to um, Sister Auntie Debbie, um, because this requires a bit more of understanding the context, locating you where you are at, and being able to move you forward to the place where you should be. So there's some work that has to be done here. But I will try and say to you that um, there are many factors that influence how you know, you've experienced Christ right there are many things it's it's a journey it's a journey and one of the things i want to say is our admonition here today is that you focus on christ your goal is to learn about him now one prayer i want you to always pray every day is lord show me the truth about christ i don't want to have you know, to try here and there. I want you to be honest with that prayer. This truth, show me the truth about Christ indeed. Because when we keep our focus on Christ, we will get everything that we want. We will get everything that we want. And I'm sure that for this person, um, you know, even as you reach out, I pray that God will bless you. Um, pastors don't promise us. <laughs> pastors are not God, right? Right. <laughs> All the promises that we can get, Scripture says in God, they are yea and they are amen. They are already loaded in Christ, in Christ rather. They are yea and amen. So all of God's promises are there. Our goal is to find Christ and then we can start to receive those promises. Some of them have highlighted his ability, his intelligence, you see, is is beauty everything is riches you see there's a way that you can become so transformed that you probably don't even have to sweat a lot before you experience favors and open doors right so everything is in christ i pray that god will bless you but more importantly i'd like you to reach out so that you can be so that we can you know you can further that discussion a little bit right and know exactly where you are so that you can be located? Because that's a very good question. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for doing justice to that question. And um, if you do want to reach out to um, Auntie Debbie, uh, the email has just been dropped in chat. You might want to just uh, reach out to her, send an email. If you have a phone number, you can give her a call as well. Um, the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Dr. Steve. Once again, God bless you abundantly. It's been a beautiful session. And um, we pray that the Lord will enlarge his words in our hearts. He will embrace us all to be doers of his word indeed and not hearers only in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Again, we want to especially welcome everyone that is here today for the very first time. You're welcome. We give you a warm welcome in the name of Jesus. And uh, please um, let us know it's your first time and send us an email. Uh, our email is in chat again. Send it to us. You know, send us an email. Uh, reach out to us. Reach out to Auntie Debbie. And uh, as you do so, the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, we are finally, you know, getting to the end of the session today. 
And um, I want to bless God for somebody special in our midst today. You know, if I was proud the same, Auntie Debbie is my mom. <laughs> Auntie Debbie is my mom. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, somebody answered the call of God. And uh, she's going to be wrapping up today. She's going to be taking the final session. Um, um, join me as with Jesus' joy, we welcome our very own Auntie Debbie. Welcome, Ma. God bless you, Ma. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Wow. What a great time in God's presence. Thank you so much, Auntie Nike, for that section. It's awesome. It's awesome. We thank God. And today... At a point I could jot no more. It was like, I, it was like, I, by the time Nifemi was done, I was full. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Nifemi, thank you so much for that profound scripture in Hebrews 2.10. There's something key that I took out of your message, Hebrews 2.10. Thank you. Thank you for reading it in NLT, emphasizing that Jesus is our perfect example. Thank you. And if you're Lua, I'm proud of you as a son too. Thank you. Thank you. Despite we gave you a very short time, it was a very short notice. We called you on Tuesday and say you prepared something and the Lord helped you to put down those uh, thoughts. Glory to God. And to our very Dr. Steve, our rabbi, thank you so much. Thank you. For everyone that has joined today, we celebrate God in your life. I want you to know that you were here because God wanted you to be here. There are a lot of things you could be doing at this time. God proposed in his heart before the foundation of the earth that you will be here. And I thank God for your life. I want to encourage you. I want to beg you. I want to beg you. Even if you're a speaker today, please make sure you go over the section again. It is important. Even if you are the one, you know, if you are an Ifemi or Dr. Steve or Ife, please make sure that you go back and replay this and listen. You will be surprised at things that God has spoken to us today, either through you or through someone else, and it will bless you. So please go back and listen. Go back and listen. Go back and feed your mind. Let's feed our mind with the word again, and you will see that we'll be able to keep Jesus at the very, very center, main, making him the very, very point in which we focus on. The second thing I would like to say, apart from you going back, is that I want you to know that you have to take ownership of your life. We are here to support as much as God give us grace. The Holy Spirit, as we've been taught today, is the greatest help and support that God himself put in place to help us as Christians. But as much as all these are available, as much as the Holy Ghost is there to help you, you need to be sincere, to be honest, as Dr. Steve told us. So I don't know what you need to do. I don't know that prayer you need to pray after now. I don't know what you need to write down. I don't know what the friend list you need to edit. I don't know who you need to actually delete. I don't know the site you don't need to go back to. But you need to be intentional. Like you just have to take charge. That aspect, it's you. God is here to help you. And he's really helping you. That's why I brought you this money. God is helping me. But there are some things I need to do. I have a will like you do. So I encourage you to take those steps that you need to. And to the glory of God, we come to the end of the February edition. I'm excited and I thank God for your life. I want to let you know that our March edition, by the grace of God, will March 24th. Is it 24th? I hope I got it. Or 23rd. Somebody check that for me. It's not March 30, then it should be 23rd. It won't be March 30 because it won't be last Saturday of the month for March. Let me quickly just confirm. It's not it's March, March 30, 23rd. 23rd. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. March 23rd. Mark the date. Keep the date. God is set to feed us again from his throne. March 23rd would be the date. And like Antonika has said repeatedly, if you're new, please, you know, you want to send us an email or you want to drop your contact now, we will get across to you. Thank you, friends that are celebrating me in the chat window. I saw all that messages. Thank you for all the stone bulb. Thank you. Thank you, Nife. I see the clap. God bless you. God bless you in the name of Just thank you, Nifemi. Thank you. I bless God for your life. You are a testimony. And no devil can saw your testimony. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We've come to the end of today's section. Thank you to all mommies and daddies online. We've got some adults online. Thank you. And thank you to Kayla. God bless you, Kayla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, I think we told you just yesterday. Just yesterday. And thank you. Thank you for that beautiful time of worship. The Aribos, thank you for joining all the way from Ottawa, people from Nigeria, you know, from Edmonton, from Calgary, different time zone. And to my own people in Regina, thank you. To all parents who align with, thank you. Thank you for doing this with us. Glory and praise we give to God. In a moment, let us pray as we go. Our Lord and our Father, we want to thank you. We honor you. We appreciate you. Thank you for what you are doing with us and through us. Thank you because of you have reminded us again this hour, your intention is to make us just like you. And at the end of it all, we converge together and you sit upon us as our head. Thank you for your work in us and through us. We honor you. We pray that Lord, all that you have sent to us, help us to hold your word dear in our hearts both the hearer and the speaker, that our profiting may appear to all in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone that is still a little confused? Holy Spirit, we pray that you will minister to us individually and you will expand the word in our hearts. Glory and praise we give to you. Till we see again, let your hand rest upon us to keep us in all our ways. In Jesus' exalted name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Young and godly generation, unmute yourself. As we sing together and as we go, hallelujah. Amen. How a generation Hallelujah, God bless you. We celebrate you. Thank you so much. Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless you. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.